guys uh, channel over here and today I'll be going through tight binding models uh, real space and momentum space conversions so uh, first of all what is a tight binding model is a model used to describe a lot of condensed matter physics systems so um, if you want a good introduction to tight binding models I strongly recommend um, this video this video over here this video is very good for introducing the basics of quantum condensed matter physics going from the second quantization formalism to actually solving tight binding models and they talk about momentum space as well so in fact um, most of my uh, I, I watched this video to revise and I now feel more confident of the conversion from real space to momentum space to the extent that I'm going to make a video on it and um, also uh, other references that I took some of these uh, type binding models from is this one the effective uh, introduction to low energy Hamiltonians in condensed matter physics most of the examples are from there and they also have a good introduction but I still prefer the YouTube playlist the most um, and there's a, I also took a few models from sh a short course on topological insulators which is quite uh, advanced for me now but I did take some examples from there just the examples so uh, briefly speaking let's let's just review what um, what the time binding model looks like so for example if you have a you have a chain of uh, nuclear sites or something and then you have electrons so you want to find this is a crystal it's a 1d crystal very simple 1d chain and then uh, let's say that the probably the, the energy the hopping amplitude they call it from one side to the other for the electron is t and the other way is uh, t also t and minus t uh, sorry not minus t the other way is t so then let's label it by sides 1 2 3 4 and let's say this goes on to infinity, then we'll write something like um, so it'll be a real space Hamiltonian will be something like h equals to sum uh, i equals to 1 infinity um, c i plus 1 c i and then we do the Hermitian conjugate for the opposite hopping. So, so this, this term over here means that uh, this term over here means I destroy at i and I create at i plus 1. So this, this term over here this term over here represents uh, this, this hopping over here. It represents this hopping where you go from i which is 1 so you go from i to i plus 1. Okay? Then that of course that's the other way, uh, which is C i and C i plus one. So this one you destroy at i plus one and you go and you create at i. So that's the hopping term, hopping ampl amplitude. So it'd be something like that, all right. And then, uh, then because this is a periodic system, you can change the momentum space. So you can call it Fourier. Other words are like Fourier transform. Um, or, or, or momentum basis yeah and basically what you do is you say that uh, you provide an ansatz for the eigenstates so sorry you provide ansatz for the, the you, you provide another basis and what you say is that ci is equals to sum over one of k uh, there's a 1 over square root n over here um maybe e i k x and c k yeah and then you take similarly you take the conjugate Hermitian conjugate you get one over n k e to the minus i k x uh I'm, i must emphasize that this is this is x i and this is c k like that so what this means is that uh, basically what this is saying is that in, so, so if the, the destruction operator or rather the creation operator at a certain position x i so this operator when it acts on the Hilbert space or the Fox space it would create an electron over here but 
basically and, and it's localized at this position but what this is saying is that it's the same thing as saying it create many momentum states and by Fourier series they will sum to something like that so yeah that's basically what is the, the, the idea of it uh, but what is important over here is that this new basis this new basis the new momentum basis will then allow us to transform this real space Hamiltonian to so if you write the real space Hamiltonian it will be like I um, then you have some of k and some of k prime so ci plus 1 would then become uh, 1 over square root n e to the power of minus i uh, k x i plus let's say the and, and let's say the, the lattice constant the distance between them is a so then it will be x i plus a right this is the position this is essentially x i plus 1 and then uh, c k dagger and then and then so this is the so this is the entire thing is the c i plus 1 term and then there's a c i term which is then 1 over square root n e to the power of um, i k prime x i c k prime dagger so this will be the c i term oh sorry there's no dagger uh, yeah this will be the c i term and then you plus the hermitian conjugate which is just the hermitian conjugate i won't write it out um, so this will then give us uh, you, you see there's a 1 over n sum then there's a k uh, k prime and there's an i okay let me just bring this 1 over n down the inside then you, you see that exponential is quite similar so we can group the terms so e minus i uh, i k minus k prime x i right and e to the power of minus i k a uh, c k dagger c k prime and then you add a Hermitian conjugate right and then uh, it turns out this term over here this term is actually the del delta Dirac delta thingy so what you get is that uh, so the sum over k and k prime it is always zero unless k equals to k prime so you can just replace all the k prime with k and then you eradicate one of the summations so what you get is sum over k c k dagger c k prime which is now k and then e to the power of minus i k a and then you add a Hermitian conjugate which is which is um yeah so what what is the thing we take away from this the thing we take away from this is that um when you have a term remember where so remember this term this term versus this term this uh, orange term over here so what's the conversion like the conversion goes from c i plus 1 so c i plus 1 dagger c i becomes essentially it becomes c k dagger c k e to the minus i k a where a is a separation so uh, so what this means is that let's say we have a hopping term from this to here let's say it's t then and let's say it's distance a okay then in momentum space it essentially when you go from when you go from uh, when you go from x to y you you end up creating this uh, the the momentum in momentum space it will just be t e to the power minus i k a so when you go from uh, when you increase in x value when you increase in x value basically when you go from x to y you're actually picking up a minus i k a so that's important to note the sign is important for non hermitian systems but for hermitian systems you're just going to uh, you're going to take the Hermitian conjugate anyway and add it up so it doesn't matter so anyway uh, so with this knowledge once again if you like to find a more concrete uh, a 
more complete introduction to this, please watch uh, this YouTube video. It's really, really, really helpful in my opinion. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and look at a few, con a few cases. So first of all, we have the 2D square lattice. This is the answer. Um, so how do we go from momentum space to uh, how do we go from real space to momentum space? So we first focus. So we, we just look at one, uh, one site, one one cell, one unit cell. In this case, it's just inside. It's just uh, there's only one site at the one one each unit cell only has one site in the two D square lattice case. So you go from uh, so let's just draw it. So this is the unit cell that we have. There's only one site. Then to go from bottom up. In the y direction, uh, we pick up a e to the power of, so it'll be t e to the power of minus i k y a y. Yeah, then uh, to go from this point to, okay, let's do the downward direction first. So to go from, to go down, we plus t e to the power of i k y a y. Then to go from right left to right, it'll be plus t e to the power of minus i k x a x, and then to go from right to left, it'll be t e to the power of um, e to the power of i k x a x. So this is the answer, and if we express it, uh, so so. Of course, e to the power of i x plus e to the power of minus i x equals to two cosine x. So if we express this in terms of cosines, then we just get this answer. Um, in this case, they they we chose to there's a minus sign, but that's not of huge importance. So yeah. So that's for the two D case. Then for the three D case, uh, very similarly, you have a three D case. So you you. Basically the same thing going left going left and right you get left right up down you get uh, in the kx and ky directions you get this and then going front and back you pick up a e to, uh, in the positive z direction you pick up a e to our minus i k z a z and then in a negative direction you get an e to the i k z a z and you add them up you get this term so oh uh, it's worth to note that uh, the 2D square lattice and 3D square lattice seem simple, but uh, it turns out it is uh, it is quite an interesting field of research to look at infinite dimensional square lattices. But uh, I don't know much about that. And yeah, our focus is just on momentum space today. So now for a slightly more complicated example, um, the hexagonal lattice. So now uh, our directions are not that clearly not not that simple but it's still easy so first we need to note that uh moment k is the k vector is kx in the uh is kx in the x direction meaning kx x hat plus ky y hat then uh then to go from so so in this case we have we let's look at one lattice side so, so this is the lattice side, and then there's six neighbors, okay. Okay, so we know that this, that this distance is ax, and we know that this distance is ay, right? So, uh, because when you, when, you, when you translate in the r direction, when, when you go from a lattice side to another lattice side, let's say uh, the let's say it hops this way, let's say it hops like t uh, in the direction of r uh, yeah r, r vector, then what you pick up is k dot r. You pick up e to the power of minus i k dot r. So in, in the previous square lattice, it was it was, it was this case also, just that. Uh, r was simply in the previous case r was either 0 a y or r was a x 0 
but in this case, R is a combination of X and Y. So in this case, uh, okay, first to go from to go from this lattice side to this lattice side, R equals to uh, AX x hat plus zero because it's only in the x hat direction but however to go from so let's just call this r1 then however to go from here to here r2 is equals to uh, a x over 2 x hat plus square root of 3 over 2 a y y hat correct because the dark because this is this over this is uh is cosine of 30 degrees which is square root 3 over 2 so uh, what we have is we will sum up all the six six directions so let's go let's do it so from here to here we'll pick up a uh, e to the power of uh, I'll leave out the t so e to the power of minus i uh, a x over two k x plus square root three over two a y k y, correct. So this is this is uh this was e to the minus i k dot r two. And then, uh, so this one, then you go from here to here. It you pick up a. You pick up a uh, e to the power of minus i a x k x, correct? Yeah. Then to go from here to here, you pick up a uh, e to the power of minus i a x over two k x, um, minus square root three over two a y k y. Then to go from here to here pick up a uh, e to the power of uh, minus i minus a x over 2 k x minus square root 3 over 2 a y k y then to go from here to here we pick up a uh, e to the power of minus i minus a x k x and then lastly to go from here to here so you see the six hopping terms. Um, you go e to the power of uh, minus i uh, minus a x over two k x plus square root three over two a y k y. Yeah, and you add all of these up. What you can realize is that this term and this term. It is it's a it's a simple matter to add all of them up. The two sine no two cosine a x k x plus okay now we need to be a bit careful. Um so let's uh let's do the so e to the power of minus i a x over two k x then there is so this term plus this so let's do this term plus this term first so there'll be 2 uh, 2 cosine square root 3 over 2 a y k y right and then if you add this term and this term you'll be plus e to the power of i a x over two k x. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah, correct. Two. Uh, we added this term and this term, so, yeah, you have a plus i and then you have a minus i, so that will be cosine square root three over two a y k y. I'm just trying to be really careful here. Sorry if I'm being slow. So then, uh, so then you see. There's a two cosine a x k x plus four. So four cosine 
squared 3 over 2 ay ky cosine ax kx over 2 and of course you add in the factor of t or minus t rather and there you get your answer yep and that is how we do it for the hexagonal lattice so let's move on to the next lattice the anisotropic triangular lattice so in this case it's pretty much the same as a square lattice however you have this additional diagonal term so it shouldn't be too hard uh, we already see the square lattice term here so let's focus on the diagonal one so it's simply a matter of considering the diagonal so the diagonal r the r vector is equals to uh, ax x hat plus a y y hat right and then the k vector is equals to uh, so this is r and then you go the other diagonal is minus r and both hopping is t prime and this hopping is also t prime so k is k x x hat plus k y y hat so then uh, you just do e to the power of minus i k dot r plus e to the power of minus i k dot minus r and that will then give you uh, that will then give you e to the power of minus i k x a x plus k y a y plus e to the power of i kx ax plus ky ay and there is just uh, 2 cosine kx ax plus ay ky ay and that is indeed this term so we can see that by considering what kind of so so let's briefly overview what we have done so far so in order the recipe to construct a momentum space lattice uh, the momentum space Hamiltonian is we take a single cell then we do a hopping to the neighboring cells so for the hexagonal one we had something like that so there's six hoppings and for each hopping you add an additional term add an additional term um, and how do you add an additional term you, you you look at the direction that it travels r you look at the direction it travels r and then you look at the momentum which is always which is always uh, kx, ky, or uh, depending on how many directions you have. Yeah. And then you take this, and then you take e to the power of minus i of this thing. And that is the additional um, factor, the additional phase, I guess, that you add on. So that is how you basically do it. But uh, let's now consider more complex situations where we have uh, a unit cell. So now we have a unit cell that has multiple sides so now uh, you can see that there's A and B so how do we do this? it turns so what in, in essence uh, the momentum space Hamiltonian would then be a 2 by 2 matrix because there's two units that, uh, each unit cell has two sides so the momentum space Hamiltonian will have it will have 2 by 2 so first let's uh, see the structure over here so over here we have this vector and then it's taken the Hermitian conjugate over here and then you have this so what this is essentially it's uh, c k a sigma dagger c k b sigma dagger multiplied by this 2 by 2 matrix and then uh, let's just call it a b c d Okay, and then C K A sigma, C K B sigma. Okay, so this is equals to, uh, this is equals to. If you do the multiplication out, it will be equals to. Uh, okay, I didn't mean to do that. It will be equals to. A C K A sigma dagger plus. C, C, B, dagger is uh, so you I, I'm doing this first multiplication first. Uh, 
comma and there will be b c k a sigma dagger plus d c k b sigma dagger and then multiplied by c k a sigma c k b sigma and then is in turn equals to uh so in the so it'll be a so there'll be a a c k a sigma dagger c k a sigma plus b um, b goes to the second one so c k sigma c k b sigma yeah then plus c um c goes to c k b sigma dagger c k a sigma plus d uh d goes to c k b sigma dagger c k b sigma okay so so i just want to highlight something over here for for convenience of calculation so you see that this term all right this term is is uh so so i you can see that this term is this one and this one right so actually what i like to do is i like to arrange it in a convenient form this isn't mathematically correct but uh, I like to arrange it where when I see something like that, it's easier because row and row and column vectors when you multiply is hard to visualize in your head. But if you just so called flip it over, so if you put uh the left the first row vector as c k a sigma, I, I won't write it as a vector because it's not mathematically correct. But if you think of it as a table, then this is c k a sigma and c k b sigma then this is a this a term would then mean that it is a the coefficient is a in front of uh in front of this guy with this guy right that makes sense right then uh the next one is b so b you can see is also is uh this term and this term and that is in fact this one and this one correct yeah and then likewise c and d so this way uh what, what this tells us is if we go from remember that uh the destruction operators remove an electron right and the creation operators create an electron that means that if we were to destroy an electron at B and create one at A, then we will be using this. If we yeah, so so look at this table and then this is so basically this is the one you uh, jump from, and this is the one you jump to. Okay, so using this understanding. What this means is that, uh, yeah. So so th this this is quite clear. I hope. Uh, so so we can then construct we can then construct the honeycomb lattice, momentum space Hamiltonian. So, so let's see. So we have. Let's construct it over here. Okay. So we have. Uh, let me just check the labeling. So this is A B. This B B A A. Okay, so this is one unit cell. This entire thing is one unit cell. Then, so you go from first you jump from B to A. Let's look at all the jumping from B to A. So to go from B to A, what are the possible routes? One is B to A, and when you jump to a next lattice, uh, you pick up a momentum. Or, or rather when you jump when you jump there's a when there's a certain distance you jump then you pick up a momentum phase vector so so uh it, because this is x direction and this is y and by and and the lattice spacing is a so then this jump will then pick up a uh, e to the power of minus i k x a x over 2 uh, am I right? You pick up a uh, k x a x b to a. Uh, 
yeah 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 I yeah I think that's right yeah that's correct and then plus ky square root 3 over 2 ay okay so this is from from b to a then there's also the this b to a plus b to the power of minus i kx ax over 2 minus ky square root 3 over 2 ay okay yep and then there's also this jumping over here so that will be plus e to the power of um, there will be e to the power of minus i minus k, kx ax and this in turn will give us uh, so, so this is equals to e to the power of i kx ax plus e to the power of minus i kx ax over 2 bracket uh, 2 cosine square root 3 over 2 ky ay okay yes and this uh, yeah so this this is jumping from b to a so b to a is this so what this means is that uh, because our momentum space Hamiltonian is going to be like that and we label it a b a b so this term this entire term is going to be here all right so let's label this uh, h k so this will be h k correct then um, if you do the similar procedure for a to b you'll see that uh, go, to go from a to b is the minus sign of is, is essentially the Hermitian conjugate from b to a so this is then hk conjugate and then a to a is 0 and a and b to b is 0 because a is not connected to any of the a's and b is not connected to any of the b's so this is precisely the result we get over here uh, you can see this this is same same notation a h of k is that right and then uh, and then now we have this so now we have the Hamiltonian and to find the eigen energies because it's just a Hamiltonian we haven't solved for it yet previously previously when we solve when we get the momentum space Hamiltonian we automatically found the eigen energies because um, because it's a one by one matrix and that's just the I it's just scalar multiplication but in this case it's a two by two matrix and we need to find the eigen values of this thing so to find eigen values uh, it's actually just magnitude of hk so uh, plus minus mag magnitude of hk so if you evaluate the plus the magnitude of hk you get this term which shouldn't be too hard to get the idea here is that there's two main ideas here one is that um, now instead of having a unit cell that's a single lattice site we have a unit cell that is that has two lattice sites so it's a and b together and then because this is a repeating unit cell and then in order to investigate uh, the 2 by 2 matrix we need to note that where jump to where so if you jump from uh, so if you jump from uh, if you jump from let's say uh, the A to the B then you look at this A and you look at this B and then you put the matrix element over here right and and the same rules for the momentum follow from the previous case even when you are jumping within the same lattice site so that that's just some rules to follow that I I, uh, I, I, I thought about it uh, I, I, I think that's just some rules I made for myself to follow when I create momentum space Hamiltonians. So with enough practice, um, you should get a hang of it. I think my Microsoft is hanging. Um, uh, that's not a good sign. Hold on. Uh, 
Sorry, give me a while while I try to resolve this technical difficulty. Oh no. I think Microsoft crashed on me. Eh? Oh. Oh, it's working again. Okay, great. So, um, I'll go through two more examples. One is the SSH model. So the SSH model is uh, like this. Uh, each unit cell also has two. So two, two sides, A and B. However, um, do note that although in the diagram we show that they are separate, but in, in, in the SSH model, I think we treat them as, we treat them as uh, there's no distance between them, which is why there's, later on there's no, um, there's no, there's no uh, term, the, the V term does not have an E, the minus I K. So let's do this again. So we have the 2 by 2 matrix, set it up A, B, A, B, okay? So A jumps to A is 0, B jumps to B is 0 as seen here. However, uh, when B jumps to A, there's two ways for B jump to A. One is going forward, so there will be a going forward will be so to, to go from B to A, we are gonna fill up this slot over here, okay? Uh to go from B to A, you it's E is W E to the power of minus I K the distance, but the distance is one. So it's just this this term. And so that would be W e to the power of minus i k. And then to go from B to A in the other direction, this one the distance is zero, so uh it's just the V. So plus V. Okay. Then to go from A to B, to go from A to B is the same thing but the Hermitian conjugate. So in the I k plus V. And that is precisely what we get here. Yeah. So that's the SSH model. Oh, it's also worth noting that the SSH model has interesting topological properties. Uh, so if you study topological physics, this is going to come out as one of the first few models you study. Lastly, uh, we have a slightly more complicated 2D model here that I just want to use to wrap up everything. Uh, so let's take a look. Um, so in this case, we have a each unit cell has two sides, okay. So I draw. So this is a unit cell that has two sides, and then, uh, in this diagram, they they don't even label the individual sides anymore. They just say it's a unit cell, and then they say this entire unit cell jump to that unit cell is sigma z plus i sigma y over two. So, uh, let's hope I can get this correct. So the poly matrices, remember is 1 1 poly y is minus i i and poly z is uh, poly z is 1 minus 1 yep okay so uh, let's try to construct it so uh, so to go from bottom to up so so let's just first evaluate this term over here so this term is actually uh, half i that would be half or so the down here would be uh, uh, it will be minus half and then over there it will be minus half so this is this term so to jump from here to here is like that however to jump from here to the bottom Okay, maybe I shouldn't. This isn't very good notation. Uh, to jump from here to the bottom is equals to the Hermitian conjugate. So it's sigma z minus i sigma y over 2. And that is equals to um, half minus half, right? Minus i, there'll be half. There'll be minus half, sorry. And that would be half. Uh, minus i times i is 1. Yeah, correct. So, uh, then to go from to go from right 
to go from the cell to the right side, you'll be uh, sigma z plus i sigma x over 2 as seen over here. Okay. And that is equals to uh, sigma z, so that equals to half plus i sigma x, so that will be i over 2, i over 2 minus half. And the other way is a uh, Hermitian conjugate. I left no space for it, but uh, so so to go from, sorry, I'll just draw another small cartoon over here. So this the to go from here to here is uh, sigma z minus i sigma x over two equals to. Uh, let's zoom out a little bit. I'm going really slow with this one, I'm sorry. Half um, minus i over 2 minus i over 2 and this one is minus half. Okay, so we are finally prepared to do everything. So, uh, so there will be, so to go from so in the end, h of k is equals to sigma z plus i sigma y to go up. So this is this term. To go up, you pick up a e to the power of minus i k, eh? uh, i k y. Yeah. So uh, I forgot to say that the lattice spacing is supposed to be 1. So the lattice spacing is just 1. Uh, wait, is that right? Yeah, that's right. So then you you use this and add it to. Let me just draw a boundary here. You add it to sigma z minus i sigma y. Actually, I didn't even have to evaluate the half and half and i over two stuff over here. I I think it's possible to do it directly. Yeah, it should be possible. It's much faster. Also, I'm sorry. You can see this video quality is really. Down the drain. If you are still following along, I'm, I'm, I would like to thank you very much. Uh, please leave a comment so I know people actually do follow this video all the way here. Uh, then you add it to jumping to the right, you'll be sigma x, sigma z plus i sigma x over 2 e to our minus i k x. I'm sorry, I'm not very prepared for this video. Actually, I was prepared, but like I just haven't done this particular calculation yeah so once again uh, so this term over here is the one jumping to the left this term is the jumping to the right this term is the one jumping uh, jumping down this one is the term jumping up okay so this then equals to and uh, you can see that sigma z over 2 2 cosine ky plus i over 2 i sigma y over 2 um, minus i sine k y plus sigma z over 2 you add e to the power I minus i kx and e to the power of i kx together you get 2 cosine kx plus uh, i sigma z over 2 you e to the power of minus i k x minus e to the power of minus i k x you get minus i oh sorry minus there's two i minus two i uh sine k x and this in turn is equals to um uh so this is cosine I'll I'll, I'll rewrite it a little bit cosine x plus cosine Ky sigma z plus sine kx sigma z. Okay, hey, sorry, this this was supposed to be sigma x. Sigma x. Um. So this one was supposed to be sigma x plus sine ky sigma y. And this thing, uh, I forgot to mention that in addition to 
the in the neighboring the neighbor hopping terms this one also has a internal uh, kind of potential energy term that is kept to itself and that is u sigma z so you in addition you must also add a u sigma z to the Hamiltonian it's basically the, the the term that is within its own unit cell and then there you go you get this answer so um sorry for this really really <laughs> lousy last example that I've I, I mean I shouldn't even have evaluated the halves over here but I hope you get a rough idea of how to convert real space uh, Hamiltonians to momentum space Hamiltonians just or purely just from looking at the diagram you can convert it uh, you can write the momentum space Hamiltonian usually once you get the real space Hamiltonian it's easier to write the momentum space Hamiltonian because you can just do the direct substitutions and go through the tedious work but this is a more uh, pictorial understanding of going from the picture directly to the momentum space I, I've done that for these few examples over here so I hope that this will be of your help um, if you, it did help you please leave a comment because that that's really a great motivation for me to make more of such videos but anyway uh, this I made this video because mainly because I was learning this thing and I found it troublesome so once I've managed to do something um, I like to make a video on it so if you found this helpful please please tell me too and I'll be happy to discuss with you if you email me or uh, write a comment. Thank you.